Hey, what's up, guys? So you can see, um, this is uh, my Nerf Defender T3, and I'm just about to put it to a paint job. Um, you can see, I already masked out this part because I want to kind of maintain the stock, um, what you call it, metallic green color, because I think that's a really nice uh, color actually. Um, and it's also going to be the same color as all these. Um, the priming bar and the accessories or the uh, removable parts and uh, I think I would like to keep it that way um, as you can see I've already sanded um, the shell down so it's uh, given a light matte color I know you can't really tell because the original uh, blaster is already just in uh, silver this is gonna be a simple paint job uh, because uh, it's gonna be easy because uh, they don't really have any paint on it originally besides the metallic green part which I'm gonna try to preserve and the uh, paint color scheme I'm going for is a uh, model after one of my older um, Gundam models uh, let me uh, just uh, re-zoom on my camera so that you can see the finer details and I'll go to a better light source this is called the uh, Stargazer those of you who have uh, watched the Astray uh, or Gundam Seed S J line would uh, would probably know about this uh, Gundam, and you know that the original color is nothing like this. Uh, it's originally uh, grey, but as you can see, uh, this colorway, you can see that um, rainbowish glitter kind of thing. Yep, and uh, you can see it's a uh, glowing uh, gold, and the glowing gold is actually the stock stickers that came with the Gundam kit. However, if you take a look at this uh, forearm piece, uh, in a certain uh, angle of light, it looks it's actually green, or it's a very dark green. And then uh, another angle will be purple. Uh, this is what we call the iridescent color. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see on this camera. I uh, don't think I can actually find a way to show it to you, but it's all over uh, in the detail in, in the in the luminous void. Just I think that's what they call it. The the, the back wing on the Gundam. But as you can see, um, yeah, I want to go for this uh, particular paint scheme. Um, there's a bit of purple over here. But I'm trying to go for this uh, glittery thing combined with the iridescent color on my uh, Defender T3 because I like the name Defender and it it's uh, it's rounded so it kind of reminds me of like a very space age type of um, blaster and I want to try and give it that spacey or galactic kind of look. These are the colors I'm going to use the spray paints for my Defender T3 uh, paint job. First one is Krylon Fusion for plastics black gloss as you can tell the next colors are pretty special colors they are meant for polycarbonate uh, plastics these i had to obtain from overseas uh, shipping is a killer because uh, due to regulations law and regulations uh, you can only ship um or export import spray paints via sea so they take a hell of a long time but this color is actually called lame flake or lame flake i know you can't really tell because of the zoom and I apologize, but this is the uh, starry, starry color. It's not glitter, it's starry, I think, because it has, it's like a rainbowish <coughs> tint to the glitter pieces. And um, this one over here is called iridescent purple green, where um, under a certain angle from a light, it looks green, but uh, from the other angle, it looks purple. Yep, and uh, although these are meant for polycarbonate uh, plastics, as noted by the cans on stated on the cans themselves, I have tried and tested it on regular ABS plastic and regular plastic. Uh, as you can tell from the stargazer that I was showing you just now, um, all you have to do is just give it a proper good uh, clear coat, and it just seal in. Um, yep. Just want to quickly add on some extra tips and techniques uh, you should take note of uh, while spray painting your plastics. Of course, you have to make sure that you shake the can well enough. Uh, make sure it's well shaken for at least a minute or two. Two will be better, of course. Um, please read the directions uh, stated on the can. Like for example, Krylon says that you should uh, hold the can at least 8 inches away from the desired plastic piece or the surface that you're going to spray on. Uh, it's up to you. Further you get, you get a better um, spread. But of course, you get less paint stuck on it. Uh, of course, don't go too close. You can go a little bit closer, but not too close. And uh, this is one technique that we learned from, uh, that I learned actually from uh, doing my plastic model kit. So always start spray painting away from the plastic piece. So for example, I'll be aiming it over here, spray paint this part, and then in one smooth uh, stroke, just uh, run my spray can across, and then uh, release only outside of the spray area. So basically, it'll be like this uh, on across and off on across off something like that if you're going in different directions but uh, yeah that is to prevent the 
accidental smudge on the initial uh, squeeze area when you squeeze it there the initial spray paint area and the additional smudge if you in case uh, it, there's any chance of you actually letting go around this area yep that's to ensure a smooth coat throughout all right so i woke up early this morning and i just want to check out the weather and uh, the weather looks pretty good as you can see um sun shining pretty brightly uh the skies are pretty clear it's not grey, uh, it's not cloudy, it's a little bit windy but that's okay um, actually the optimal would be for you to choose a day that is not so windy uh, it's dry and hot, uh, that'll be pretty good that's the best uh, ideal for spray painting um, if you're overseas and uh, you're facing like uh, autumn or winter then that is not a good period for you to do your paint jobs uh, unless you have a um, certain like a booth a painting booth and that's fine but uh, in Singapore um, the reason why we will always choose uh, to have a sunny day a bright day uh, simply is because uh, it's very humid over here once it becomes cold uh, the, the vapor or the humidity level and the coldness will actually affect the way your paint job turns out it might end up frosted and that's not what you want if you're using a glossy paint or it might um, affect the rate of um, the paint curing so yeah it looks great today so uh, we shall go ahead and uh, begin the paint job alright so we're going to start the painting process uh, as you can see I'll be using Krylon Fusion for plastic gloss black I've got on the latex uh, surgery glove and um, it's very well ventilated in this area so always make sure you choose a well ventilated area to do your painting now the general rule of thumb is number one uh, shake your paint shake it enough shake it well enough i've already done so for the past two minutes um, rule number two which is the most important rule always coat your plastics in thin layers of paint ten thin layers of paint is always better than one thick coat of paint and you'll find out why So. On this green piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this guy in thin layers. I'll give it about two to three coats. And in between each coat, uh, you have to make sure that you wait for at least an hour or so. The more the better in between uh, coats for it to really dry. So you have to make sure that the paint really dries first before spraying on the next layer of coat. If not, you'll just ruin the undercoat. Alright, so let's begin. I'm going to start with the green piece and then on the orange piece, what I will do for this guy is basically just I go for a very, very thick coat of paint and then you'll see the difference, which is quite obvious when uh, the paint dries. So here goes. So this is what a thin layer of black paint looks like. Uh, you can see it's very sparse. You can still see the green to it, but that's all right. This is just the first coat. You have to make sure you do this. Now I'm going to set this aside and leave it alone for an hour or so. Uh, the time now is 10, 10, 10 as you can see. 10, 10. So yeah, I'm going to do the orange piece. piece as you can tell I've already spray painted a very thick coat of black paint it looks good right now because um, it's like as if oh I missed a little bit there I gotta cover that part it looks like as if everything is covered very nicely yep so on first glance it looks really good but the moment it dries that's when the problem rises so I'll show you guys the difference in a while when you compare these two side by side you can see the difference is uh, very very obvious this one is the green this one is the orange as you can see the orange has virtually no orange at all anymore it's totally black it looks really good right now even you can see the light bouncing off it, it looks really good right now because the paint is still a bit wet uh, this one is the first coat it's turning a bit black uh, but uh, we're gonna go for a second coat on this one this looks good enough to a point where you don't even need to go for a second coat so we'll just let this one dry off and for this one we'll go probably for a second coat and maybe even a third coat all right uh, i will be documenting uh, each coating process all right and uh, the time now um, is actually 10 13. i can't really show you my watch uh, give me a second let me try this year uh, so that's the 
time and uh, we shall wait for about an hour or maybe even more before we actually coat the green peas for another layer. Right, so we'll see you later. The time now is 11.28 as you can see. It's already been past an hour for the paint job. Um, on this piece over here, you can start to see now the ugly stuff over here. That's due to uh, your very bad sanding and uh, you can tell that it's not very glossy uh, simply because of the thick layer of paint. And you can even tell that at one particular patch over here, you can see that it's a bit more glossy than the rest. That's what happens when you give it a too thick a paint coat and uh, things like these might pop up and might happen like you can tell over here this is a bit uneven over here on this side it's a bit frosted and over here it's a bit more glossy as you can tell by the way the light reflects on the plastic yep i will leave this to dry for more because it's too thick a coat of paint and we'll uh, not touch this we'll not add any more coats of paint on this this one however uh looks like the paint has really dried up already um it's uneven simply because of the way we've painted it uh, let's give it a coat. So I will go ahead and proceed and give it a second coat of paint, a uh, thin paint job, and uh, we'll see how it turns out from there. Alright, so yeah, this one is turning out a lot better. As you can tell, uh, you can't really see any of the, you know, the marks at all that we've actually sanded off the Nerf logo. It looks like it's just one flat piece of plastic. But as compared to this, you can actually see all the disgusting, ugly marks. It's been almost 10 minutes uh, since I actually put down the coat. As you can see, 11.36. Um, I will not be touching it. That's the piece, the green one that we've uh, already just coated. This was still the orange piece. As you can tell, it's still uneven. But for us, this one, uh, when the light shines, it's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty even color. Yep. So now the paint is still a bit uh, wet. So we're gonna wait for it to dry. I am heading out for the day. <clears throat> so what? Um, I'll revisit this only tonight. So. Remember the timing, it's 11 now, 11.37. I'll be revisiting it uh, tonight, so I'll give it more than enough time for this thing to dry off, and then we'll do a proper comparison then. Okay, it's comparison time, and I know that you think that the shot is very blurry and all that, and uh, you'll understand why in a while. Basically, this is the comparison, as you can see already, even though the shot is uh, off focus, that you can see the crappy marks over here. This is uh, the very badly done up piece. This is the one with the proper finish. Um, let me bring it close to you and then you can tell. Look at the amount of detail left in there. Very, very clearly pronounced. This thing is smooth. Like as if it didn't even have a Nerf logo to begin with. Look at the um, evenness of the colour. The black and the details are still left there untouched. It's very clean details. And on the side, you can see that uh, these are still very pronounced. The small little marks over here as compared to this, the badly done up one. You can see all the very very ugly marks. These are caused by the Dremel without filing down. And uh, no matter how you try to escape it, you can always tell that uh, there always there has been marks over here that you didn't do a good job on the Dremeling. Uh, of course, you get a very nice coat of black when you spray your paints very thick. However, thick comes with a price. Check out this area. You can't even tell that they used to be squares or rectangles, they look like balls now, little round dots, balls, as compared to this, sorry, these are very clearly obviously squares, and uh, the pronounced vent area is now like that, it's not as pronounced as you really want it to be, no matter how the paint just uh, you know, overlaps a thick layer of paint. So the honest truth is if you get a result like this, and you think that your paint job is great and fantastic because I know some nerfers out there think so and you're a stupid fang, I mean you're a stupid fool and if you contracted somebody to do a paint job for you and you get a result like this then you're a stupid fang, I mean you're a stupid fool too you have been ripped off practice time patience will get you a result that is something like this do not get ahead of yourself and do not claim that this is fantastic and do not claim that this is very good and do not claim that this paint job turned out well because it did not and just to show you guys this was the green one and this was the orange one so yes thank you very much